like y'all been tussling out here. What are all these white feathers doing everywhere? Y'all been tussling and going on? Welcome everybody, welcome back to Homestead Heart. This morning I'm doing some work out here on the farm. I need to take Zeke his food before he starts acting up. He, he'll be like, I know you ain't forgot about me. <laughs> uh, let me give him his food. gonna have to get me another scrub brush I don't know where my scrub brush is that I use to clean out everything to make sure that all of their bowls stay clean and uh, keep the ducks pool nice and clean as well in the garden right here let me show you we've already started in the garden here you probably can see those like um, white coverings right there on this side we're putting our cabbages and this is where all of our turnips and everything is as well okay so that's what we got going on in this garden and then we have all of the broccoli and cauliflower on the other garden now y'all I had moringa planted in these raised beds right here moringa trees that I had been pulling from but I was so close to getting a very very large harvest you all and if I tell you our goats have been breaking out they literally jumped up on the trees pushed them over and ate every single leaf that we had and broke the trees right so now that we've gotten the cattle panels up we had some old cattle panels that we were initially hey bud gonna use in the garden but we decided to take them since they were just old they weren't really cattle panels i think they were uh called hog panels and so we took those and put those on this side of their fence and you see that that board that we got there for zeke uh for now because we got to get some more panels to put up here because they're literally using their horns to put under the gate lift the gate up high <laughs> bending it so they can go underneath crafty little somethings ain't they <laughs> so we've done it for nina and the weathers that's over there with her and so they can't get out anymore but zeke can literally get out if he wants to but he doesn't try now because you know we've pulled the fence tighter but he can really get out if he wants to but he don't worry about getting out so but anyway, you all, I just wanted to talk to y'all to let y'all know, you know, I was thinking about a comment that was made when I was having a conversation with someone and, you know, they was telling me just how hard this is. You know, they started their little homestead and little backyard homestead really is what it is. And they said uh, to me, you know, this is really, really hard because they're doing a lot in their little backyard homestead. I got one of those, um, 
I don't know what they call them, but these little beautiful flowers that are produced from these little beautiful yellow flowers, but then what ends up happening when the flower opens up, then it has all these little thorns on the inside that um, once they dry out, they are extremely sticky. And I don't know how one managed to get in my glove, but it's one in here and I have to be careful when I put my glove on because I'm trying to get it out, but I can't get it out. So, but anyway, you know what, when I, when I thought about this and I thought about this type of life and the fact that my great grandfather lived this life for so many years, you know, and when I would hear my grandmother talk about the work that they used to have to do on the farm, one thing I never heard her say was that anybody ever said that this was going to be easy. This is not an easy lifestyle to live. It's not easy. It requires so much work, so much time, so much dedication, you know. It requires a lot from you, right? Depending on how large of a scale you're working on, right? So if you're doing a nice big backyard garden and you're learning and then you have slowly added a few chickens and then after that you've decided that you want to add some quail and then you've decided that you want to add some ducks and then maybe some goats and then maybe some cows and i'm going to tell you the more you add to your homestead the more work it's going to be and things will sometimes fall behind why because life happens right you get busy and oh my goodness, if you work outside the home, then you're gonna get extremely busy. And this is not going to be easy at all, right? Sometimes somebody may get sick in the family, so you can't do things like you wanna do because you gotta tend to family. You may get sick. <laughs> you may be the one who end up getting sick for a few days and, and all of that. And if you are in a family where nobody else is really feeling what you're doing, you know, they might not be feeling the whole getting in the garden, getting their hands dirty, right? They might not be feeling feeding chickens, milking cows. They might not be feeling that. They probably don't want to have nothing to do with that, right? But at the same time, you know, if they're going to benefit from them, you want them to help. But the difference is, is that they may not help with the same type of joy you have when you do the work, right? They may not have that same enthusiasm about the farm life that you have, right? To them, it may become an unbearable chore that they absolutely hate doing, but they do it because you tell them to, right? They do it because you say, well, look, <laughs> you eat these eggs too you eat this chicken like we eat this chicken right you benefit from the cow's milk like we do like when you when you pour it in your bowl of cereal whatever you eating with your milk you know you benefit from this too so yeah you need to help especially if they are you know old enough at an age where they can help and do a lot of work i'm not talking about little bitty children you know little little bitty children tend to be enthusiastic about doing anything to help mom dad grandma aunt uncle whoever they tend to be enthusiastic about it you know but when when they get a little older and that's not really what they want to do then they're not going to have that same um energy the same passion right see some of us when we come out and we look at our turkeys we look at our chickens you know we may say good morning you know like we got cooper road over here she's one of our hens that is absolutely crazy <laughs> crazy she's a, a a copper moran and she recently hatched out about five little baby chicks and i'm gonna show y'all that in a in an upcoming video but i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to be strategic about it <laughs> because she don't play that we call her cooper roll for a reason and if you from where i'm from you already know what i'm talking about <laughs> so <laughs> we call her cooper roll but anyway <laughs> when i go in there and I see Cooper Road, and I know she a little feisty because she got those babies. See, I know what that means. I know what that means. I know how to handle her. I know it's not personal. 
you know? But if somebody don't like that type of work and a chicken becomes a little aggressive and they may not understand the real reason why or they may not even care, they may get aggressive back with your chicken because they think your chicken got something against them, right? You just never know the thinking, right? And so for us, because we're around our animals all the time, we understand their demeanors, you know, like chickens even, they have different personalities. Some of them are very calm, very docile, love to be held. And then you have some that don't touch me, right? Do not touch me, feed me all day, but don't touch me. See, when you are out here working your homestead or your farmstead or your farm, whatever you wanna call it every day, you learn these things about your animals right you learn all of these things about your animals and then you have a certain appreciation for them right you respect them but others who don't know that or have a love for the lifestyle that you love so much they won't see it that way you know like i said it'll just become an unbearable a very unbearable chore for them but they're gonna do it because you asked them to gosh dog it they're gonna do it because you asked them to, right? But, try to get it out. But do they want to do it? Not really. <laughs> and I know you probably wish that the people around you loved the lifestyle like you love it. But the reality is that just may not be the case. So it's not gonna be easy for you. So make sure that when you're starting your new homestead, make sure you keep in mind that if this is something you have to do by yourself, 24 seven, because you ain't got, you might have help right now that don't really want to help. Or you might have help where they really want to help. But if at some point they may go off to college or something like that, you know, at some point, if this is something you have to do on your own, you need to consider what you're adding to your homestead. You need to make sure that it stays manageable for you, okay? Because number one, you don't want to have something that is too much for you because it's not going to be easy from Jump Street. It's going to be a lot of work involved, even with your gardens. If you don't have anything to help uh, suppress the weeds, then you're going to be doing a lot of weeding. So now you got to Take care of all your chickens, your cows, your goats, your horses, your whatever else you got. And you got to weed your garden and you got to harvest and process the food that come out of your garden. You got to keep planting. You got to pull up stuff that ain't no good. You got to take care of uh, pests that may be in your garden. See, this is not easy, but you can do it. You can do it as long as you make it manageable for yourself right? As long as you make it easy for you to maintain, okay? But nobody never said that this was going to be easy. So if this is um, the lifestyle that you want, know that it's going to be a labor in a lot of labor involved, right? I think I got it. No, I didn't. It's going to be a lot of labor involved, but if you love this kind of work, Y'all, it's truly going to be a labor of love. Like, I love my ducks. I really do. I ain't got but two left. I ain't got but two left. Out of all the ducks I had, I ain't got but two left. From foxes, dragging them off in broad daylight, right? Because sometimes our ducks, they like to wander around too, and they'll go places where they shouldn't be, right? And so I'm going to have to think about getting something to fence them to keep their little area for them so they can't wander too far you know because they went behind this other chicken house back there and one of them just never came back after that the other two were literally sitting back here just kind of chilling but the third one we never could find so that's another thing you know you have to be mindful of predators and whatnot and we're not really concerned about predators in broad daylight we really don't have that concern in the daytime so i think it was a fox so whatever got it got it and left and it could have been 
uh, a dog, because we've had dogs to come over and attack our animals, right? When Grizzly and Moo not here. <laughs> so, but anyway, you all, this indeed has to be a labor of love, but just know that it is something that you can do. And then you have to think about like um, setting up your homestead so that it is manageable for you. And I am going to do um, a video talking about that because I was asked how would I advise setting up a homestead? And I thought that was a really good question. And I'm going to answer, you know, giving my um, little opinion, you know, from the way I see it. Of course, so many people will see it different ways. But depending on how your layout is, it could be laid out in a lot of different ways. But I'm going to tell you, based upon my own experiences with working on our homestead, what matters the most to me when it comes to managing the homestead and being able, able to maneuver and do chores. Oh my goodness, I'm going to do that video because there are some things that you could do to make it easier and there are some things you could do to make it extremely hard. So we're going to talk about how to set up a homestead in my opinion okay all right y'all so i just wanted to talk to y'all and just give y'all some encouragement and let you know you know you can do this it's not going to be easy please don't go into this thinking that it's going to be easy because it's a ton of work all by itself just harvesting and processing a lot of food right and if you're doing it for a large family but you're doing it all by yourself you're gonna have to either maybe get them involved and see what it is that they can do that they enjoy doing on the homestead. Maybe they don't like feeding the chickens, right? But maybe they enjoy taking care of the goats and the cows. Maybe they like the larger things. I don't know, you know, but whatever it is, maybe you can kind of get a feel for what it is that they like and maybe let that be what they're responsible for, right? Because when you force somebody to do something that they hate, they'll do it. Or not just hate, maybe they just have a very strong dislike for it. I guarantee you, they're not going to do the very best job at it, right? They're not going to do it the way that you would probably do it. And they're not going to do it with that same energy, right? So that's the thing, you know, for me, you know, I love positive energy, especially, you know, my chickens are out. They be flying out. <laughs> they know how to get out. They know how to escape. So, y'all. Can y'all see the guineas up there? <laughs> they know how to get out. So, you know, they may not do the very best job. And when it comes to the energy, you know, I feel like when I'm around my chickens and my animals and stuff like that, I feel like they can feel my energy, right? And the way that I treat them matters, right? And I feel like they express that through their behavior around me, right? I feel like they express that through their behavior around me. I feel like they can feel my energy and I want my energy to be good because either I'm about to eat their eggs or at some point we may have to eat them, right? And so if that's the case, I want to make sure that they are healthy. I wanna make sure that their energy is good when I'm around, right? And so that's just how it is. You have to be careful. Like, you know how we say we have to be careful who we allow around our children. We even have to be careful of who we have conversations with because sometimes the energy from that person can be such that it just drains you, right? <laughs> you be like, oh, I'm so tired. And you ain't done nothing. You just tired from listening to them with maybe negative energy. So I feel like being around your animals and stuff, you're not going to be happy all the time. But I feel like the majority of the time when you're around your animals, that energy matters. 
that energy really matters and so i would rather take care of my animals with love and respect and understanding for the type of animal that they are and the personalities that they have i would rather show them that respect because i feel like i'll get that respect in return if i show them that respect you know i know that zeke right here i know that there is a certain area in his pen that he don't like me in right i don't know why but he gets really uncomfortable and he'll run out and <laughs> he just be standing there like could you move you know don't don't be right there and i think that's because where you know it's his sleeping area right it's like his bedroom he don't like nobody in his room <laughs> But when I go in there to clean it out and, you know, his behavior, I could tell that he's not, he's not comfortable with that. And so I've learned that about him just from having him over time. And when I clean it out and put him some fresh hay in and then I back out of there and I leave him alone, then he's happy then. See? So it's like getting to know your animals and just knowing that about your animals, it matters. It really does. So I just wanted to come on. I think I got this thing out of here. Oh, that's not a thorn. That's a piece of hay. <laughs> come on out of here. That's just a piece of hay. And it still don't want to come out. It's stuck to the interior of my glove. I got a piece of it. But, y'all, that's it. I just want to talk to y'all about that. It's not going to be easy, but I guarantee you, you can do it. But you just have to set it up to make it manageable for yourself, all right? And I'm going to talk about, like, the easiest way to set up a homestead. To me, whether you have a small homestead or a large homestead, I think that this particular layout that I have in mind will make all the difference in the world. All right, y'all? So stay tuned for that video, y'all. And that's going to do it for this one. I hope you really took something away from what I wanted to share with you all today. I hope it made a difference and I hope to the individual that posed this question, I hope that you found it helpful as well and others too because sometimes, you know, we're not the only ones that have that same thought or that same question or want to know how do you deal with something like that, you know? And and I'm the type of person I would rather do something on my own than to have somebody doing something that don't want to do it hate it because it is going to show it is going to show in the way it's done it is going to show you know there are a bunch of little things that we notice when we love things you see what i'm saying good morning to you too i'm coming to feed you see when i go in i could notice things like for example I could notice that it could be poop on the top of the feed can because one of the chickens or one of the guineas got up there and they may have pooped on it. And when I see it, I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to bring it out here and I'm going to spray it down and clean it and make sure that it's clean. But if somebody is doing something that absolutely hate doing it anyway, they just going to take their food out. They're going to swing it wherever it got to go. They're going to put that nasty stinking lid back on there. They're not going to take the time to clean it. They're not going to be like, oh, this is dirty. I need to clean this. Oh, they need some fresh hay in their nest boxes or some fresh bedding. They need some fresh stuff in here. So I need to rake this out and clean it. See, somebody else ain't going to think like that if it's something that they hate doing in the first place. They don't, they don't care because the bedding is nasty. They don't care because one of the roosters got up there and maybe all the hens and pooped in the nest box. They're not going to be like, oh, I need to clean this out, right? They're going to be like, no, I just fed them. They ought to be okay. So you got to remember, like, if, if this is something you're setting up and you want your family to help, this is a conversation you need to have with them. Like, is, hey, you know, what part of this do you think, what role in all of this can you play so that we all can have a functional homestead where we all play a part in making sure that we have what we need to take care of ourselves, right? Take care of one another. So if everybody's going to live and enjoy the benefit, everybody need to play a part. But we need to find out, well, what role would you like to play, right? And then do a good job of explaining what that role consists of. And if they don't understand it, even if you got a 
write it down and put it inside of one of those um those sleeves you know and tack it on the wall on the inside of every coop or whatever it is tack it on the wall if they have to read some and look at it every day to make sure that this checklist is done before you leave out of this chicken house you got to make sure there's no poop in the nest boxes make sure that um, you collect the eggs right make sure that the waterers are filled make sure that you don't do this or that you do that you if you have to you know write it down initially until they get the hang of it well do that you know but everybody should play a part it should play a part but that's a conversation you need to have because if you don't have that conversation and then you just take on all of this stuff on your own and you add all of this stuff and now you need help well who's going to help you and what's going to be their spirit about helping you you know i've i even had the person say to me well you know the response that they got was well, I didn't tell you to do this in the first place. I never said I wanted to be a part and, and, and do this, that, and the other. You did this, right? Well, I did it for us. Well, I didn't want to do this. I was perfectly fine doing what we were doing at first, you know? And so having that conversation is going to be a serious one. And then if you do meet that resistance where someone says, I, I don't want to do that, I'm not opposed to you doing it, but I'm, I don't really want to do that, then now it's, a, you know, it's upon you now to decide, well, I want to do this. So how much can I do? How much can I manage and still be able to work and still be able to take care of the children or still be able to do the X, Y, Z, you know, whatever it is you got to do, male or female, you still need to decide what can I handle and then go from there, right? And then hopefully at some point, don't count them out all together. You know, hopefully at some point they'll, you know, be like, you know what? I can see the benefit of this. So yeah, what can I do to help? At some point, that's what you pray for that, you know, at some point that'll be the response that you get over time, you know, hopefully sooner than later. And then at that point, you may be able to add even more to your homestead, right? Because now you got help, okay? But in the meantime and in between time, until you get that help, you have to make sure you decide what it is that you can manage, even if you had to manage it all by yourself, right? All by yourself, okay? See, some people can manage a whole lot on their own. They can, they can milk cows and raise cattle for meat and raise turkeys or goats for meat and and all of that and deal with the chickens and uh, meat birds and have five or six gardens <laughs> they can do it all right all by themselves more power to them but that might not be your story right that might not be a reality for you so that's something that you have to um seriously think about and have a conversation with those that are in your family on how that's going to look if you all decide to move forward with a homestead and just how large of a homestead are you trying to build okay all right y'all that's going to do it i hope you found this information helpful if you did please share it with someone who you also would um feel it would benefit okay you all so that's going to do it. If you haven't done so, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos we upload to our channel. And thank y'all again for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. You can do it. <laughs>